Greetings fellow conquerors, this is Darkfire Slide, and welcome back to EU4 as Ayutaya. And let me tell you something, recording software is fun to use. Let me tell you, like, I, I went to record today and I started recording the episode, and, uh, wouldn't you know it, I, uh, <laughs> my voice wasn't coming out. And so I've come to find out, uh, through a Google search that somehow my microphone had been disabled in my recording software because reasons. I'm going to blame the new Windows Creators update. Because anytime we can blame Microsoft for something, we should do that, right? Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. All right, Bengal is spying on us because, yes. What's, what's Bengal's army like? Let's find out. We've got like 20k, so they probably kick our asses, honestly. Although we do have a force limit of 22. We actually do have 20,000 troops ourselves, so never mind. We would stand a chance, maybe. TM. Hey, 10 prestige for free. I like it. Uh, also, Bengal has, like, all the allies that have ever existed, ever. ever. It's kind of ridiculous, actually. Looks like, uh... Looks like China's doing all the things, getting all the points. They haven't done any, any of the Celestial Reforms yet, though, so, uh, you know. Alright, so what are, our, what are our current plans? Well, uh, we're gonna pick up the next Diplotech, but then we're gonna start focusing on, um, getting our first idea group out. And then we're gonna do things like, uh, focus on developing provinces so that we don't, aren't paying a million points for tech. Because th that's nice. That's a nice thing to do. Or not do. You know, not pay for things. We're gonna have our own renaissance with Asian people. Sorry, I <laughs> some of you will probably find that joke incredibly distasteful. And I don't care. All right, get that trade efficiency up. Pick up uh, Diplotech five five percent. Look at that. Point one ducats a month. Crazy. All right. Next, we're gonna pick up colonies, but. Also, what we're thinking of doing, we have two choices of places that we can expand to. We can either attack Lansheng, who is allied to Tangu, who only has uh, 4k, uh, and also Lanna, who has uh, 8k troops. Now this is an excellent situation for us because we can definitely feed our vassal Sukutai here. And we can also attack Khmer, however... Uh, I think, I think with, uh, Dai Viet's help, we could definitely defeat Lan Shang without, uh, breaking our back here. Yeah, Lan Shang has, uh, 12,000 troops. So that's 20k, it's 24k, versus 30, uh, well, Sukutai's army can't help, but, like, so, like, 33k versus, like, 24k. Yeah, I think we have the advantage. Our main issue is gonna be manpower, because sieges and jungles are just very, very taxing on our, uh, nation here. Alright, we've maxed relations with Patani. They seem slightly less upset. Fair enough. Also, it doesn't help that our diplomatic reputation is in the tank because we annex a subject. However, because of our karma, we, uh, have a diplomatic rep. So, it all works out. Kamai is seeming like a very tempting target, though. Just a very, very easy avenue of expansion that doesn't really require much uh, forethought. Oh, our level of splendor is currently high enough to be able to purchase an ability. Oh, we've humiliated, we've uh, humiliated a rival, and that has allowed us to get a thing. All right, well that's cool. Let's see, what can we get? We could get unrest minus five. Uh, as a state edict. Aggressive expansion, minus 10%. Um, we can transfer subject, peace treaty at half cost, and we can claim bordering claims. I'm not sure what this means. Um, we can reduce the cost of war taxes entirely. We can increase our cavalry to infantry ratio. We, get, we can get plus one uh, tax production and manpower when colonies are finished. And we can get plus one combat bonuses in, in the terrain type of our capital. Well, I think we're going to go with the higher developed colonies because we're about to start colonizing. And if you think about it, if we get like, oh, I don't know, 10, 20 colonies? If we get like 20 colonies, that's like, 
<laughs> you know, 20 free, or no, sorry, that's uh, 60 free, like, development points. That's insane. That is so good for us, because our colonies don't actually turn into colonies. They're just going to be part of our state. And that's ridiculous. We're going to be so overpowered, thanks to just sending people on boats to places. It's nuts. Alright, so I think what we're going to do here is we're going to wait until Tech 6, which is going to be in 1469, next, so next year. Um, and when we get to that point, we're going to finally unmaintenance or put our army back on uh, full maintenance. And then just go invade some people. Ming has attacked Chagatai. Alright. Where are you? Oh, there's Chagatai. Alright, so we can spend 33 ducats to gain one base tax in Ayutthaya, or 871 manpower. Well, given that our manpower is getting better, but it's still not great, I think we're going to go with the money instead, because our economy is actually pretty decent at two ducats a month. Uh, plus, this will help further improve our economy, and uh, that base tax in particular is going to be super nice, uh, given that we already have a temple in Ayutthaya itself. Now, I wonder if that actually helps... Uh, the Renaissance. I don't think it does. I think we have to manually develop the province. And it's going to be a long road to getting the Renaissance to actually fire. We're going to have to spend a lot of points in order to get this to actually happen. And I'm still torn, you know? Like, if we get the tech advantage, because next tech is uh, more combat with uh, better tactics score, better infantry shock, and fire, actually. Um, and better cavalry, like, we just, we will have such a massive advantage over our enemies. Um, especially if I, if I hire, like, another two cavalry regiments. Um, I'm gonna hire one more cavalry regiment, as a matter of fact. You know what, I'm gonna go for broke. I want to attack Lanshang and just get our regional rival, like, out of the way. Um, to pave the way for future expansion, basically. But we're gonna have to be careful with this war, because our manpower is not great at the moment. Um, it could be a lot better than it currently is. But, uh, anyway, we can pick up the, uh, the tech now. So we can now get Asian Step Cavalry and Samurai Cavalry. Alright, uh, we can get, this is a Buddhism event, so I'm not gonna bother to read it, basically. Um, so we could lose Karma, gain National Unrest minus two, um, we can just gain 10 karma and 5 prestige. Uh, or we can gain 10 karma, 15 prestige, lose 20 ducats. Let's just go with this one, because we're about to attack people, so uh, we're going to be losing some karma here. Hey, we improved our prestige. We've got 100 free admin points. That's pretty sick. Oh, right. We should have uh, replaced our cavalry here. Um, I'm going to take the samurai cavalry because of the morale damage. Morale damage is super useful in the early game. Um, in, in my experience. So we're going to take the mission to conquer Angkor from uh, Kamai, even though we're going to attack Lan Shang. Um, taking that province later will be a basically a free um, injection of manpower into our country. So got those unit sprites, got some people in some, uh, you know, Thai-looking armor. I, I know nothing about Thai history. It could be, like, the most inaccurate thing ever, and I just... No idea. Alright, so, we have a tech advantage. We have a numerical advantage. Um, let's go to war. Let's attack Lan Shang. It's time. This could be a very, very profitable war if we play our cards right. So we'll see what we can do. Now, we're still very far ahead on admin tech. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump three points of development into our capital um, because it's cheaper and because we'll get a lot of uh, points towards the renaissance by doing this. Um, by a lot, I mean like 10%, but you get the idea. It's, it's a start. <laughs> um, can I... We'll just, we'll just raise it by like... We'll, go, we'll put three. We'll go three. Three makes sense to me. Um, so that'll be like 0.36 more uh, decades a month. Um, get some progress towards the Renaissance, currently at 11.5%. Uh, Sounds good to me. 
And then, uh, because the thing is, we're not going to be taking that much land in this war ourselves. We're going to be feeding a lot of it to Sukatai, um, who then, who, who we will then annex probably with, uh, Diplo Power. So, um, and our national focus will be able to be reset next year. Uh, so when that happens, we're going to set our focus instead to, uh, Diplomatic Power. So that we can get those points we need to start colonizing. Um, at, at any rate, let's go ahead and, uh, raise our army maintenance. And, uh, it's going to cost a little bit at first. Just because of the sheer amount of, uh, things that we need to pay for here. Alrighty. Now, can our land even support our army half the time? It doesn't doesn't look like it. Tony One's a kind of big stack for, around these parts. Now, I think the smart thing to do here is to attack um, Lan Sheng's allies first. All right, Ming's gonna demand admin points. All right, you guys are jerks. <laughs> So yeah, we still can't press our uh, vassals' claims here unless this is supposed to be like like is that what this means? Like that you can press your vassals' claims because like let's see, yeah, but I don't think it does because I, I did a start in another place where you have a vassal and you know waited till he got some claims and I could totally press the claims. So I have no idea like what determines this. Um, Right, no, no, I started, that, I remember how I tested it. I, I started as the Ottomans, actually, um, a couple days ago. Not to actually play, like, literally just to test this mechanic. And I was like, oh, I took a vassal. Oh, I can press his claims. Okay. So I, I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense to me. We're going to take uh, Chayafum here. That's going to be our war goal. Um, Sukotai. I wonder if there's a way we can get him to get his fleet back. Oh, yeah, we're going to have you protect trade somewhere else. Um, I think we're going to send you to Bengal. Yeah, we'll send you to Bengal. That's, that's where all the money's at. Um, so we're just going to wait for our fleet to get there first. Um, it, it's okay if we wait a little bit because, uh, you know, manpower. <laughs> we do not have a lot of manpower going into this war. Um, Alright, hey, hey, Sukatai, I want you to attach to my boat. Like, please. <laughs> he just, he doesn't want to take the boat, you know? Alright. Well, I guess it's your choice. It pains me, but before we start this war, I think I need to maintain this fort. Um, just so they don't just instantly besiege it and, and win, basically. So we'll go ahead and get that squared away. And then, without further ado, let us go ahead and begin this war outright. We will call in Diviet, we will call in our vassals, and we will smash the faces of all of our enemies who were stupid enough to stand against us. We march to war! Oh, Tongu. I bet he's seriously regretting his his life decisions up to this point. <laughs> now let's see. Uh, our general does have a siege pip, so uh, we're gonna pull a little magic here, get the general into that province. Boom, bam. Our truce with Patani has ended. Alrighty. All right, Patani, go ahead. Come at me, bro. Let's see. We can gain ten prestige, and. Coach's opinion of us goes up, or we can gain five legitimacy, and Pasai's opinion goes up. Uh, let's go with the prestige and uh, uh, coach. It's probably cock, but I didn't want to say it because YouTube commenters are really immature about that sort of thing. Oh, we're paused. It's like, man, these sieges are taking forever, man. Like, why? We're paused. That's why. All right, I'm just gonna split this army, start sieging down Lan Na's land. Uh, we don't have enough men, so we'll just split in half again. <laughs> there we go. Should we be doing sieges? Probably not. Are we? Yes. I'm probably just going to annex Tangu 
to be 100% honest. Yeah, yeah, we're taking casualties. Life is terrible. Oop! Kumai is now attacking, uh, Lan Sheng. Well, we were definitely just, like, eliminating our regional rival. <laughs> he's, uh, he's not gonna be in the game for much more after this. Alright, our heir is now greedy. Minus 10% national tax modifier. Well, that's just, that's just awful, okay? Why are you like this? Alright, hey, buddy, you went out of the war? Oh, it's 42 aggressive expansion. It's a lot of aggressive expansion. Maybe I'll let you live. And just take your ducats. Yeah, that sounds reasonable to me. I don't want to get a coalition over Tongu, of all people. His, his peacock flag, and that would just be haunting me for days. I'd be waking up in the middle of the night and be like, No! The coalition! The peacock coalition! My god. I'm happy with 114 ducats and, and peace. Get out of here. Shoo. Lan Na is probably going to get off the hook as well. Um, I think they can even keep their alliance with Lan Shang. Because Lan Shang isn't going to be long for the world after we finish this war. Um, especially with Kumai, like, taking some of their land. <laughs> Holy crap, Dai Viet just kicked the tar out of a larger uh, Lan Shangian army. It's ridiculous. Ugh, man, we are taking so much attrition. I'm gonna have to, like, reinforce with mercs here. I think. Ugh, 26 ducats apiece. Well, it's the price of progress, I guess. Our uh, diplomat advisor has died. Well, that sucks. Alright. No reason for these cavalry to be taking attrition. We'll get them out of the province, get the mercs in. As our uh, manpower situation continues to deteriorate. So I guess we're going to find out if Kumai is going to... Uh, take this land here. It's looking like it's a possibility and if that's the case We may just have to attack them in the which case. I will definitely take some land from a uh, Lan Na here And specifically I might take a province that's next to Shen Wei. although dangerously enough Shen Wei is allied to uh, Bengal which could cause some serious issues for us Let's see, we could get 30 ducats or 10 prestige. Um, 10 prestige is like a lot better most of the time than 30 ducats. So I'm going to go with the prestige. Um, anyway though, uh, in the next episode we are going to decide what the fate of our enemies is going to be here. And we're going to see how this ward, with ward, how this war with Lan Zhang will end. And uh, more specifically see how um, Kumai handles their uh, current position in the war as it were. But that'll have to wait till next time. So until then, I'll see you on the next one.